In this video, I would like to look at what causes aggregate demand to increase or decrease. So let's quickly remind us of what is aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is the total amount of expenditure in an economy. And we calculate it through the formula aggregate demand equals consumption, add investment, add government spending, take away um, net imports or exports. So, for aggregate demand to increase or decrease, these components have to increase or decrease. So, in this video, we're going to explore what influences, what are the main influences on consumption, um, government spending, investment, and imports and exports. So, let's start with consumption. Consumption is expenditure from private individuals and households. It makes up about 70% of aggregate demand, so it's a large part. One of the main things that affects consumption is interest rates because if interest rates are tightened then um, the cost of borrowing money becomes more expensive and the reward of saving money becomes um, more in our interest and in the consumer's interest. This means that consumers are likely to save money because there's an incentive lying there. So interest rates will affect um, the amount of consumption in an economy, so whether they're tight or loose, will affect how much people are spending. Because if they were loose, then people are more likely to borrow money and splash out the cash because they know that's not that much money to pay back. Then the second thing is consumer confidence. It's very important that consumers feel confident because then only they'll spend money. Now, in my opinion, there's two main things which influence consumer confidence. And that is where the economy is in the trade cycle and the wealth effect. So let's start with the trade, the trade cycle. If an economy is going through a recession or a slump, it's going down, negative GDP, it's in a terrible situation, then consumer confidence is likely to be low because unemployment is likely to be on the rise or probably you know as big as it could be. And this means that consumers will start to feel insecure about their jobs and that is a source of income. So they will start to feel protective over the money they make and are likely to spend less, save more, so that if they were to become redundant or lose their job, they know that they have a bit of cash in their account. Second thing that I thought affects it was the wealth effect. Now this is the effect if, for example, the prices of assets such as houses rise, then many consumers will feel they may they won't have made money because they wouldn't have sold their house but they will feel that um, they're more richer because their ha value of their house has gone up and they're likely to feel more confident financially and go out and splash the cash. The third thing is tax. This is a fiscal measure used to um, alter where aggregate demand is um, at the moment. So we can have two types of taxes, direct and indirect. And this you've probably seen in my previous video. Indirect tax is a tax on expenditure, such as VAT, and direct tax is a tax directly on, for example, your income, income tax. So income tax also affects consumption, because if income tax rises, then the amount of disposable income a consumer has falls. This um, decreases their spending power, and this means that um, they probably spend less and aggregate demand falls. Then indirect um, taxes such as VAT also affect it because if incomes have stayed the same but VAT has increased then items start to become more expensive. This means they can consume less or they may feel even just put off to buy things. So those are factors which affect consumption which largely affects aggregate demand. So now let's move on to investment. There are also reasons, uh, which are factors which influence investment. For example, consumer demand. Now, this consumer demand, remember, is affected by all of the factors we just talked about. So, if consumption is low, then we have a knock-on effect. The investment is likely to be low, because what's the point in investing when consumers are not ready to spend? The second thing is interest rates also affect um, uh, businesses and firms. Because if interest rates are tightened, then this means that they can't borrow, um, they're less likely to borrow enough money, uh, borrow money so that they can buy, you know, capital goods. The third thing is tax. Uh, just like with consumers, 
they have direct tax, not income tax, but corporation tax. Now, if this rises, again, the amount of money they have to spend in, for example, um, capital goods, research development, or products, or whatever they want to spend the money in, that becomes smaller and investment shrinks. The last thing is the general confidence and lookout and speculativeness of firms. Now, the nature of a business is that they have a couple of people who look out into the future and make predictions whether well, prices are going to rise, interest rates are going to fall, and businesses react according to these predictions. So if a prediction is saying that interest rates are going to loosen, at that current time, investment will be low because they will wait for interest rates to loosen and then they are likely to spend money. But the third thing that influences um, aggregate demand is government spending. Now this is probably circa 25% of aggregate demand it takes up and it's probably, you know, quite a big proportion but not in comparison to consumption. And there's less factors kind of affecting government spend, if you like, looking at investment and consumption. So the first one is tax revenue. If we had a sudden influx of specialised workers into the UK who were working legally, or if we had influx of multinationals and businesses and firms, this means that the government will have more tax revenue from corporate demand and, and income tax and fat, etc, etc. That means they have more money to spend. And if there is more money lying there, they can spend more money. Hence, increasing aggregate demand. Or if people start migrating, businesses start moving because they lose faith, then the opposite happens. Also, like we're coming up to uh, election now, um, elections make a difference. So towards the elections, government spending will increase because the government needs to show that they're doing so. Healthcare will suddenly be better. Suddenly there will be flowers on your road. Things will change to try and persuade us to vote for the same party. Whereas if another party is coming in, they may make um, commitments such as we will increase our spending in healthcare, you know, or, and on education to make services better. Or they may have certain values and missions. Education is a way forward. We will invest and make better quality education. If they make these commitments and they have these values, then the free press and media are not going to leave them unless they achieve it. And this um, change of government and values and all that will cause aggregate demand to shift here or there. One of the government's most important and significant objective is inflation. They need to keep it at 2% because that can cause like a negative domino effect to other um, problems in the economy. So to meet inflation, they need to alter aggregate demand as one way of... Um, Aggregate demand is one way of altering inflation. So they may reduce government spending if they know that inflation is going too high. Or inflation is low but um, economic growth is low, then they may increase government spending to push up economic growth and they might be satisfied with a bit of increase in inflation because a bit of inflation is harmless. The last thing is current account, imports versus exports. Now this varies a lot. For example, with exchange rates affect us a lot because if suddenly the pound strengthens, then exports seem very expensive and imports seem cheap. This will probably make us um, go into more of a trade deficit. The UK is already, you know, a net, um, in in a deficit, a trade deficit for this. So exchange rates affect it because it affect the demand and the purchasing power of other countries. GDP and productivity is another point, because if GDP and productivity is rising in a country, that means there are more services or goods or something to offer, and that means that there's probably more exports likely to happen because there's more productivity, rather than relying on other countries' productivity to bring into, for example, the UK. As we mentioned with growth, investment and government spending, these don't just happen in the UK, obviously, they happen all over the world. So if suddenly we see in Spain, all of these things increase in aggregate demand increases, then exports from the UK may suddenly increase because there will be more demand from other countries. And also, another thing with other economies is if the inflation is too high, then um, depending on the inflation like of the UK compared to another country, demand will vary because 
if inflation is really high in the UK, exports will seem, for example, really expensive. Whereas if inflation was low and another country was high, exports may seem really cheap. So that will vary the demand from other countries, which will also vary um, the imports versus exports.